In this video we're going to do a more complex flat file. And this is a purchase order that I've designed in sort of a flat file format where I've identified using uh, identifiers for each type of data item and we're going to build this using the, the flat file schema generator. So the name of the file we're using as our model here is called flat file purchase order complex dot text. So I'm going to actually get the name of that file into my copy paste buffer here. Oops. Okay, so now we're going to go to BizTalk. We're going to go to our Visual Studio in BizTalk. We're going to go to PO's schema generated and we're going to add a new file, add new item, and this will be the flat file schema generator again. So we go to schemas, flat file, and I just want the last part of my name here. So flat file, purchase order, complex, and take the text off so it will go back to an XSD file. Click add, next, and then here I want to give it the file that I'm using as input. Um, flat file complex will be my root element and that's okay. We want to go to the next page. I'm going to move this out of the way. There we go. So now everything's selected. That's good. I'm going to hit next and I am going to use delimited by symbol here. Then I'm going to click next and here since every line is delimited by a carriage return line feed I want to make sure that this is the default here. Then I'm going to click Next. And here's where we're going to do things quite differently than what we did before. So since each line really contains more than possibly more than one field, we are going to define each line as a record here. And then each line will have sub-elements under it. Now one of these records though is actually going to be a repeating record because it occurs more than once. So let's keep going here. There's the ship to, the build to. But here where you can see they order more than one item, you're going to select repeating record here. And then in our actual data file you can see there's two items. So we don't want to define item more than once. So what you do is on the second item you say ignore because we've already defined the item as a repeating in the prior section here. And now we give element names to each one of these. So let's call this uh, date header uh, customer customer header. The header is I just a term I'm using for record here. Um, total header we have PO flat file. This is the comment header. Then we have the ship to header, the bill to header, and then we have the item header. So now when we click next what we're going to see is all our headers and then we're basically going to loop through each header to define the full specifications of that header. So when you put the word record here in the element type column that will cause basically the wizard to kind of go into a sub loop Okay, so here's all our headers. And so now you pick the header you want and you click Next. Then when you're done with all your headers, you click Finish. So we'll start at the very top. So now we want to define just the order date, which is already highlighted for us here. So we click Next. And this is going to be by relative position, not delimiter. And then we'll basically say right there is where our date is. And see, we really, we're really we not really interested in the order date column. So we'll put ignore on that. And then here, we'll select this as the order date. Okay, it doesn't seem to want to ignore this. So actually, I'm going to hit the back key. And right here, this will be our tag, order date colon. 
So that will be our record has a tag identifier, actually the space as well. Still doesn't want to get rid of that. So I'm going to hit the back key. We do have a marker there. We have a marker here. Make sure I type this correctly. Okay, so we cannot ignore this. We'll just have to make it a field, field element here. And we'll call it uh, order date identifier. We click next, it's going to take us back here. And you can see that how it actually built the order date for us. And then I want to go to customer header, next. It's identified that for us, next. Go to relative positions, next. Again, tell us that it's an identifier called customer number. And then we click here to tell it what column that number actually starts in. And we got to give good field names, so we'll call this cust header ID. And this will be the customer num. And let's assume it is a string. Okay, the next is the total header, so now it gets kind of repetitive what we're doing. We're going to look for total amount by relative. That's going to be the identifier, total amount, colon. There's where the dollars start. Click next. And this will be total amount identifier and total amount. And that needs to be a number. Decibel. Next, now we're going to do comment header, same type thing, by relative position, has an identifier called comment colon, click here, go next, give it a name, comment identifier, and then the actual comment itself, next, the ship to header. Now this one's going to be a little more interesting because we have a mix of comma delimited and positional here. So I'm going to select by delimiter symbol this time because I want to use the commas to separate. And I do still have to though, before we get to the commas, we have the word ship to which we want to skip over. And now the delimiter on this row is actually the comma itself. And let's go next. Pretty close. We've got extra space in Suzy Q. So let's go back here, put a space on the ship to. See how that lined that up a little bit better. So now we have uh, this is the ship to name, ship to address or street, ship to city. Ship to state, ship to zip, and ship to country. Click. Oh, is there, are they all strings? Uh, yes. So we go next, and now we're going to do the exact same thing for bill to header. So we go next. It is delimited by commas. There's the comma. The tag is going to be bill to colon space. And I'll stop the video and just rename these right here. So you can see the names I've given these and they're all strings. Click next and now we're in our final one which is item header. This is our repeating row. We could have 10 or 20 items on one order. And this will also be comma separated. Comma and we have a tag identifier called item there. And so here we have item header. I like calling it header at this point. So it's item and what? Uh, part number or SKU or something like that. Item part description or title. Item quantity ordered. Uh, item price. Item unit price. 
and then we have item comment. Now here we have to look at the, some of them are not strings, so here we have an integer. Quantity, and then the price should be a decimal. Everything else here is a string. And now you can see we've identified every single header, so there's no more to be done. The next button has been dimmed out, and now we click Finish, and here is our schema. So at this point, you can double check it. I think there's one thing I forgot on the date. Well, I could say this is a date field, but remember dates have different formats in uh, flat files, perhaps, than they do for SQL. So let me look at what kind of date I had here. So here I have the, uh, that is not an XML standard date, so I'm just going to leave that as a string. And then in our map we'll have to do some manipulation on that date. The order ID, the customer, and so on. If you look at the flat file tab here, you can see it's a little more complex than the, fa <coughs> the past ones we've had. You can see that each header can be positional or delimited. So now before we create a map and do anything with this, we need to validate our data file. So here's the schema and here is the data. So right click here, go to properties, and then input instance will be native. The name of the file I want to test with is purchase order complex.txt. It actually, I think, remembered that from the generator. And now we want to click uh, validate instance. And the file XML that it generated can be seen right here. If I hold the control key down and click, we now have XML. And you can double check that you know the numbers are in the right places. Uh, we have these various tags. There's Suzy Q Garland, Texas, and so on. And here's our order items. So it looks like we did a pretty good job with that. So I'm going to conclude this video, which will just be on the schema portion of this. In the next video, we'll do a map for this and add it to the same receive port where we already have had a map before.